Hey, today we're kicking off Colossians. Uh, this is one of my favorite books, letters in the New Testament, just because of how it lifts Jesus to be at the center. Um, nowhere is Jesus more magnificent and vivid and compelling uh, from a theological perspective. I mean, um, this is just some of Paul's best and most brilliant writing about Jesus. I want to encourage you this week. It's only four short chapters. I want to encourage you and challenge you rather than just reading one chapter a day. If that's all you can do, then do that. But um, try reading the entire letter every day. It's short. It's, it's, it's achievable. You can do it. And it is brilliant. If you want a, if you want, um, a high shining, radiant picture of who Jesus is, uh, this is it. The thing I want to focus on for chapter one, and there is so much we could focus on in chapter one that it's hard to do this video, is this idea of the mystery. You'll see it in verse 26 and verse 27, and then in chapter two, verse uh, two there, um, of God's mystery. The mystery that was hidden from most of the world, hidden throughout the ages, hidden throughout history. It's only been revealed at this time, finally, um, to the saints, to Jesus followers, and um, it comes through the word of God, it comes through the gospel. The mystery is, I mean, he says it actually in chapter two, verse uh, two, the mystery is Christ himself. Jesus is the mystery that was hidden throughout all time, throughout all space, from all people. The mystery is Jesus. Now, mystery about what? Here's what it's about. Uh, what, you know, this is the mystery, what the world is actually all about. Um, the axis around which the world turns, it's Jesus. Throughout the beginning of time, right, God, God creates, the fall happens, the world is broken, the world is in pain, people are searching, people are, you know, um, scrambling around, you know, crawling in the dark, right? Looking for answers, looking for light, looking for God, for gods, for goddesses, for, for hope, for whatever it is. Um, it would make sense for anyone throughout the history of the world to look around, to look at the suffering and the pain and the brokenness and ask, what is this all about? Why is this the way life is? Why is this the way the world is? What's the story here? And uh, this is, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is um, the mystery, right? Paul, Paul is unlocking this mystery for us. It's Christ that's at the center. Uh, Paul gets specific in verses 19 and 20. He writes, For in him, in, in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. Did you hear the two things that pleased God? Um, for, for, for God's fullness to dwell in Christ, and then was, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things through the blood of the cross. This is what the world is all about. Creation, human beings, right? Uh, made in the image of God, the fall, our rebellion, pain, brokenness, what it's all about, God's plan from the very beginning, from, from before the foundation of the world, God's very first decision about who God was even going to be, was he was going to be the God who came in person in order to give himself to reconcile the broken world to him. This is who God is. This is the center and the purpose of history. This is the center and the purpose of you and me. This is um, the uh, this is the source of our very life. Um, you know, the glory of the mystery, as Paul writes, is Christ in us. Later in Colossians, Paul will write, um, Christ who is our life. Jesus is the very center of everything. This idea that God is a God who decided to be God with us, to be God to save us, to reconcile us. Um, this is what Paul means when he says the grace of God, right? Uh, joining us into, into his family, right? Because of who he is. That's what Michael talked about on Sunday. This is what Paul is talking about 
throughout Colossians 1. This is his grace and our response, as you see very early in Colossians, our response and what Paul is writing this, right, to, um, to sort of praise the Colossians for it, it's because of their faith in Christ Jesus. And so what this letter calls us to, what this letter invites us to, is to see the majesty and the radiance and the mystery of Christ, the grace of God in person in Jesus Christ, and for us to have faith in him. So I invite you to read this letter and read it again and again and again um, so you could see, see the grace of God, right? And then come to trust in him.